So we're going to discuss about combination. So what is a combination, right? And also sometimes you would hear what is a selection. So let's say I have a group of three people, P1, P2, and P3. Right? My goal is to make a team of two people. A team of two people. So how many different teams can I make? How many different teams can I select? Right? Teams can I make, can I select, or whatever. From this group of three. So I can do P1, P2. I can do P1, P3. I can do P2, P3. Can I do P2, P1? P3, P1 and P3, P2? Looks like good, but then what you need to understand is this, that these two are same groups, right? I select P1 first and then P2, or I select P2 first and P1. If I ask you what is the team, you will just say P1 and P2 or P2 and P1. There is no difference in it. So, it's redundant. It's basically the same team. The different unique teams are only three teams that I can make. So, simple understanding is that's why we call it selection. So, we are selecting some people out of a group of people or selecting some things out of a group of things. And the order does not matter. Order of selection does not matter. Right? In the situations where the order of selection does not matter, we use the combinations. Right? That's what combination is basically. That's why we call it a selection. So, permutations is like an arrangement where the order also matters where P1, P2 is different from P2, P1, but we'll get to that in the next video on the permutations. But understand, it's about selecting people from a big pool or, you know, forming teams or making committees, etc. Those are the standard uh, things that you see in combinations. And where the order of selection does not matter. I select first this person or this book or this entity, this product, and then the next, or the second first and then the first doesn't matter, you know. Those cases is when you start to use the combination and selection. So, if I have to select R different things from N things, right? Let's say I have a pool of uh, 10 people in a room and I need to select two people, right? How many different uh, are, let's take a simple example like what we did here, right? So I had three people. I'll first show with this example and then I'll come to this 10 people thing. I have to make a committee of two people out of three people. So how many different uh, teams or committees can I make? As I said, there are three people and then I have a group of two people, sorry, a team of two people to be selected. My goal is to select two people. I have a pool of three people. So if I have a pool of n people or n things and my goal is to select r things, the different uh, number of groups or committees or the pool of, uh, you know, teams that I can make is n, c, r. That's what this is. So how I got 3, c, 2, right? So this is the maximum, the bigger pool I have and whatever is the number I want to select is n, c, r. And n, c, r formula is n factorial pi n minus r factorial into r factorial and what is factorial what is 5 factorial 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 right that's basically the product of the numbers that's what we need to do so if i have to select two people out of a group or a two member committee from a group of three people that's basically 3c2 so that is 3 factorial by 3 minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial so 3 factorial is so and so 3 minus 2 is 1 factorial into 2 factorial. So 3 factorial is 3 into 2 by 2 into 1 is 2 factorial, 1 factorial is 1. So 2, 2 gets cancelled out is 3 is the answer, which is what we got here, right? So I can make three different teams. So that's what 3C2 is also giving me. Some simple things that you need to understand. What is 0 factorial? 1. It's not 0. 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6 and so on, right? Another thing I see students struggling with is, for example, let's say 10C2, right? 10 uh, people in the pool, I need to make a two-member committee that can be done in 10C2 ways. That is 10 factorial by 2 factorial into 10 minus 2 is 8 factorial, right? How, how did I get this? That is N minus R. This is 10 minus 2 factorial. That is 8 factorial. This is R factorial. That's why it's 2 factorial. So now there is no point in writing this as 1 into 2 into and so on up to 10 and then 2 into 1 is for this and then 1 into 2 into and so on up to 8 and then you know keep cancelling all of this. It's waste of our time to write down all of this. What I would say is this. See which one is the bigger factorial in this 2 and 8? Eight, 8 right? So 10 factorial is basically 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So what do I get this here? This is all 8 factorial right? So just write the 10 factorial like this. So I cancel out 8 factorial and what I'll get is just the 9 and 10. Because I know 10 factorial is 10 into 9 into 8 factorial. 
right? By 8 factorial, I just cancel this out. So I'll be left with 2 factorial is 2, 2 1s are 2 5s are, so it's basically 5 9s are 45 is the answer. So just do that. If I say what is 12 factorial by uh, 7 factorial into 5 factorial, see 12 factorial, I cancel 7 factorial, what will I get? 12 to 11 into 10 into 9 into 8 because after that 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is already 7 factorial, I'm cancelling it out. 5 factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2. Now I have no choice but I need to do it, right? 5 8s are 4, sorry, 4 2s are 8, 5 1s are 5 2s are, this is 4 2s are 8, 5 1s are 5 2s are, 3 1s are, 3 3 are. So I have 2 into 3 into 11 into 12, I get whatever the answer is. I'm just saying this is how you should calculate rather than doing it a longer and tedious approach. But most important to understand this NCR thing, right? I have a bigger pool, N people or N entities, I have to select R in that committee or group or team I'm forming, NCR is the number of ways I can make that select those teams. Right, so let's solve some questions, right? As we always recommend, we ask you to pass the video when we are showing the problems. Try them on your own, solve them on your own. If you couldn't solve it, that's still fine. Give it a good shot. We are going to explain it anyway. Then you look at our explanation and see whether you got it right or you missed something. You otherwise, you know, you couldn't understand something. Go back and see that again. Whatever, make that you make sure that you understand this concept better, right? Uh, so an exam contains two parts: part A and part B. Part A has ten questions and part B has eight questions. If the student has to choose seven from part A and five from part B to attempt the exam, in how many different ways can the student choose questions? So what is the goal in English? To attempt or complete an exam, I need to attempt part A and part B. I don't have R as choice because I'm not said that I can attempt one of these two. The question clearly says student has to choose seven from part A and five from part B. So it's part A and part B. So how many questions do I have in the pool of part A? 10 questions, right? And how many should I attempt? Seven. So how many different ways can I do complete part A? 10C7. I have 10 questions in part A. I need to select 7 questions. So 10C7. It's combination because doesn't matter which order I select the questions. If there are 10 questions like question 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's say I attempt first 7 questions and leave the last 3. Does it matter if I attempt first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? No. It's all the same. Right? Why? Because the order of uh, attempting the questions has nothing to do in this. It's just about which seven questions did you attempt in part A. That's the only thing that we are looking at. That's why I use combinations. It's just selections or it's 10C7. And it's into how many questions do you have in part B? That is eight questions. And I have to attempt five. So it is 8C5. So what is 10C7? 10 factorial by 7 factorial into 3 factorial. So this will get cancelled 10 into 9 into 8. 3 factorial is 3 into 2. 3 threes are 2 fours are. So 4 to the 12 into 10 is 120. 8C5 is 8 factorial. I 5 factorial into 3 factorial. This is 8 into 7 into 6. 3 factorial is 6. So that's basically cancelling out. 8, 7 is 56. So I am ending up with this. So 12, 6 is 72. 12, 5 is 60. 6, 7, 2, 0 is the number of ways I can attempt this exam. Right, again, it's simply ruling out, coming out to this and part and then figuring out each thing independently and multiplying it. Right, as simple as this. Ravi has six friends. In how many ways can he invite one or more of them to a party? So, Ravi can invite one friend or two friends or three friends or four friends or five friends or six friends. Right? These are the only options because he says invite one or more. It's zero friends is not an option. He can invite one friend from six friends. So how many ways can he invite one friend from six friends? Six C one. This is two friends from the pool of six, so it is six C two. This is three friends, that is six C three. This is six C four. This is six C five, and this is six C six. Or 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 that's why it is. Here I have to add, not multiply, right? Understand this. He can invite one friend, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six. It's not one friend and two friends and three friends and four friends and five and six. No, that's not correct, right? So it is basically adding them. So doing them like 61 is six, 62 is uh, six into five, 15 and keep doing all of this is be very painful, right? The easier thing is this. Uh, so 61 plus 62 plus and so on plus 66 
is basically 2 power 6 minus 1. How, I, how am I saying this? You know, nc0 plus nc1 and so on up to ncn is basically 2 power n. You know, this is part of the binomial expansion in binomial theorem. So, it's basically 6c0 plus 6c1 and so on up to 6c6 must be equal to 2 power 6. I am starting from 6c1 to 6c6, not from 6c0. So, I need to know this value. 6c0 is 1. As I said, nc0 is always 1. So, this goes this side. So, 6c1 and so on up to 6c6 will be 2 power 6 minus 1. This is easier one to you know find out. What is 2 power 6? 64. Minus 1 is 63. This is what the answer is, right? If I even do this here, so what will I get? What is 63? Right, we are getting 63, right? 6 plus 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. That's what the individual values. You still get the same answer. It's just going to take a bit more effort.